Nothing like a little unrest. There were ghosts at the gates, not days ago. Those things I said before. Oh, Clive. What am I to do? My wards and I may soon be without a home. What's happened? The High Cardinal has descended from his lofty throne and taken up residence here in Northreach. The High Cardinal? Leader of the Council of Elders, second only to his radiance at the head of the Imperial government. Not that any of those things still exist. Now he goes by his noble title, the Duke of Oriflam. And what does he want with Northreach? He wants to transform it into a military stronghold. A foundation upon which to build a new Sambrek. He's already secured the support of the various army remnants. With promises that they shall be afforded the respect they deserve in his empire. One built on the confiscated property of the people. He would rob the populace to pay for it. Believe me. I have used every means of persuasion to discourage him from this folly. But for whatever reason, he will not listen to me. What does Captain Philippe make of this? When the town was under attack, it was him the soldiers rallied around. Couldn't he use that influence again? How? By speaking out against one of the most powerful men in Sambrec. A man whose stated aim is to revive the Empire Philippe's comrades swore to serve, and to improve the soldier's lot within it. The Captain can offer them a regular supply of gruel, and an occasional trip to the Vale to help them forget the terrors they face each day. The Duke offers them a vision of strength and safety. No. Any attempt to incite mutiny would cost Philippe the support of his men if it did not cost him his life. But given the mood around town, mutiny may yet be unavoidable. The people have little appetite for further deprivation, least of all when it serves only to elevate others. And who could blame them? Clive, would you appeal to the Duke on my behalf for your services to Northreach? You have the respect of the soldiers, and they will take you to his eminence if you ask them. And unlike Philippe, no bonds of loyalty prevent you from speaking your mind to the man. Well, will you try? You could hardly fare any worse than I did. I'll see what I can do. Thank you, Clive. Tell me then. Where will I find this Duke of Oriflam? In the garrison? Overseeing the troops, yes. All right. Wish me luck. ceremony. Let's hope I didn't make a strong impression. Sorry about that. You're the dame's man, aren't you? You got some business with the captain? No, actually. With the Duke. I was hoping I might be able to speak with him. We're under orders not to let any civilians pass. But you should be all right. His eminence has heard all about you and your heroics. Wait here. I'll go and ask. So, you are the sellsword who lent his aid to the garrison. 
The Empire owes you a debt, and I shall see it repaid. But tell me, is it wealth that you seek, or favor? Neither, Your Eminence. I thought only to inquire about your plan to turn Northreach into a stronghold. Ah, I see. You are worried the expanded garrison will render your services redundant. Yet you needn't be. A proud fighting man like yourself shall always have a place here. Pride of place, in fact. For too long has the contribution of the noble soldier been under-reckoned. But no more. For it is they who shall see the Holy Empire rebuilt, beginning right here in Northreach. Why here, Your Eminence? The town has been fortunate enough to escape largely unscathed from the recent troubles. Her defenses are sound, and her garrison well prepared. Which is more than can be said for Oriflam or Twinside. The Empire wants for a capital, and I believe Northreach to be the perfect place. With Care Norvant as her citadel. Once we have seen to the refortification of both the town and the castle, we need only build a wall around both to create a city that would be the envy of the twins. Plans are already underway for the construction. Soon enough, these thralls shall learn that they are no match for the might of Sandbreck. I fear you underestimate how dangerous these creatures are, Your Eminence. Should they return in force, you will need all the people of Northreach to come together in defense of the town. Something they may be loath to do if they've been deprived of their worldly goods. The people will do as their leaders command. If Sandbreck is to be rebuilt, she will require a functioning government. One whose authority is beyond question. That is why this levy is necessary. So that any man who wishes to join the army might do so and be fed, outfitted, and paid as befits a defender of the Empire. <sighs> and yet there are those who persist in peddling the treasonous lie that I seek to steal from the people and drive them from their homes. I suspect they're afraid of losing what little they have left. Precisely. The common folk have little and less, and you mean to deprive them of even that? You would sow the seeds of your new empire in your own salted earth. Sabine, we have discussed this. Yes, and I told you then how putting the empire before her citizens would lead only to revolt. Without an empire, there are no citizens. And in yours, there will be only beggars. Is that what Griga wills for her people? Do not take her name in vain, Sabine. I'll come back later. A citizen's revolt. I wonder what the people really think of the Duke's plan. It wouldn't hurt to ask them, I suppose. Let's begin with those on the other side of the wall. Sabine. As long as you remain, the veil will cease. What is it you're after, sir? Just your opinion, actually. I wondered what you thought of the Duke of Oriflam. <laughs> oh, him. Not much. None of us traders do. It's thanks to nobles like him that we had to set up shop this side of the wall in the first place. Couldn't have the rabble getting any closer to the holy capital, could they? And now he's trying to drive us out completely, threatening to take everything we got from us if we don't clear off. If the dame said she wanted him run out of town, I'll be straight through that checkpoint, tar bucket in hand. Mm. 
A question, if you don't mind. What do you think of the Duke of Oriflam? Mm, don't get me started. You build a life for yourself somewhere, only for some noble to turn up and tell you you've got to hand it all over to him. If he thinks his name and his chains give him the right to empty our purses, he's in for a rude awakening. We'll do whatever it takes to keep what's ours. Whatever it takes. I've been hearing a lot of talk about a certain duke. Nothing good, I'll wager. Going around acting like he owns the place. And with hardly a word to the dame, this is her town, not his. I take it you'd rather she was in charge. As far as I'm concerned, she still is. Just need his eminence to sod off back to Oriflam. Well, the people seem united enough. What about the soldiers? who was talking to his eminence. On the dame's behalf, yes. I was trying to persuade him not to take the people's goodwill for granted, but it seems my words fell on deaf ears. What do you think of his plans? I'm a soldier, mate. He tells me what to do, not the other way round. Listen, I've got nothing but respect for the dame, but I've got a family to look after. That's where my loyalties lie, not with the town or the empire but with my wife and children. If the Duke can get us the men and the equipment we need to fight off those blue-skinned bastards, I don't care how he does it. I left everything. As long as you oh. remain, they always seem to... You are embarrassing me. <laughs> You're embarrassing yourself. I hear the Duke of Oriflam plans to turn this town into some sort of fortress. Do you think that's a good idea? It's not for me to say. All I know is that unless the Emperor orders me otherwise, his eminence's word is law. Look, no one likes all these taxes and tariffs, but empires don't come for free. Once Sambrek is back on her feet, we'll all reap the benefits. Excuse me, do you have a moment? I wondered if you'd mind sharing your thoughts on the Duke of Oriflam. Well, <laughs> he's made a lot of enemies coming in the way he did. But I mean, look around us. You can see the state the realm's in. The traders might not like having the screws put on them, but if they volunteered a few more of their hard-earned gill before things got bad, maybe they wouldn't have to. I think the Duke's got a point when he says rebuilding the Empire is the best way of making sure we're all protected. And if that means people who don't know one end of a saw from another have to make way for those who do, well, that's just how it goes. Hmm. Let's see what Philippe makes of all this. Captain, do you have a moment? For you, certainly. Clive, wasn't it? Thank you for last time. How can I help you? I wanted to ask you about the Duke of Oriflam. Do you intend to go along with his plan? But to tell you the truth, I'm in two minds. It's my sworn duty as a captain of the Imperial Army to obey his orders. 
but I can't say I agree with him. Philippe, I remember you saying that you became a soldier to protect the people you loved. The dame included. That's right. I did. Well, she doesn't agree with the Duke's orders either. She thinks they could tear Northreach apart. And she's probably right. Thank you, Clive. I know what I need to do now. Protecting the people I love is what matters. Doesn't matter how. Well, duty calls, so I better go. Thanks again. It seems Philippe wants to do the right thing at least. I expect Isabel will be pleased to hear that, if nothing else. How did you fare? Were you able to speak with the Duke? I was, but... <sighs> so Northreach is to be a fortress after all. Well, it will certainly help to hold back the thralls. There's no denying that. Though I doubt it will come as much consolation to the townspeople whose worldly goods are confiscated to pay for it. They deserve to be heard, Clive. To have a say in this new empire the Duke means to build. Sadly, his eminence values their obedience more than their opinions. And hopes to reassert the authority of the state. I fear he sees the people as mere pawns on his chessboard to be sacrificed for the greater good. Needless to say, they themselves are of a different opinion, and would rather their destinies were in your hands. The soldiers, meanwhile, are content to follow their orders. And not just because of the Duke's rank, but because of his vision. I thought as much. Had I sworn to protect Sambrek, I dare say I too would want nothing more than to see it rise from the ashes. Thank you for trying. But the battle is lost. I don't know about that. What happened to your uniform? I handed it in along with my resignation. Told the lads I wished them well, but that I owe it to those I love to call it a day. But why? Because I realized what really matters to me. Not following some nobleman's orders for the sake of it, but protecting what I care about. Protecting Northreach. I honestly don't know when those monsters will return, but I'm certain they're not finished with us yet. And when they do come back, we need to be ready for them. We need to stand together, all of us. And with you to lead us, my lady, I reckon we can do it. It was you who finally convinced me, Clive. There's no point following orders if they go against everything you believe. Indeed. All of us standing together. That has always been Northreach's best hope, and one which still lies within our grasp. We have only to turn our attentions to the true enemy. Thank you, Philippe, for showing me what I must do. Anything for you, milady. Speaking of uh, standing together, would you mind if I borrowed a few of the lads from the Vale to help keep watch around the town? I fear his eminence has loftier tasks in mind for the guard. Not at all. Be my guest. Wouldn't be the first time. There may be hope for Northreach yet, especially with men like you and Philippe to champion our cause. I, for my part, shall continue to work upon the Duke, in the stubborn belief that I might still tempt him into joining hands. But I suspect I shall have to call upon your aid again. Until then, Clive. Until then.